Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. Today is the day to launch the maiden voyage of our mobile chicken coop. I feel like I need to break a bottle of champagne over it or something. Who's got that kind of money, right? All right, so uh, if you're new to this series, we've been building on this turkey for uh, almost six months actually. A little here and there, but the game plan was when warm weather hit and grass started growing, we're gonna get the chickens out of the greenhouse coop which you can see their yard there is a little bare. That's where they overwintered. And we're gonna get, get them out on green pasture. So the mobile coop with the poultry netting allows us to move them around to different spots. And hopefully, if all goes well, I'll never have to mow this grass anytime this summer. If I do it right and move the net around appropriately, I may have to come in and knock off some of the tops of this scrubby stuff they won't eat. But that is the plan. So if you, if you want to see the details of how we built this coop, then of course there's a playlist you can go check out. We'll uh, link it there. So I'm not going to actually move the chickens till tonight after dark once they're on the roost and I can easily put them in a cage and bring them down. But what I want to go ahead and do is take the fence down and get it set up. Since this is my first go, I want to see how it works out. Now the plan is to use a 12 volt charger. I've got one that's converted. You can do 12 or uh, 110. And uh, so I'll use the 110 for now because I, I got to go out and buy batteries. I need to buy two deep cycle batteries that I can use and rotate them back and forth or put solar on. Still determining what I want to do there. The solar fence chargers, I don't trust them. So I want to have something more reliable there. But right now we're just going to run 110 from the workshop down here. I got plenty of old extension cord that I don't mind laying out. And we'll let that be the power source for now. So first, take the fence down. Beautiful day. I'm going to be here all day, so I'm going to let the chickens free range. Don't have any worry about our evil fox showing up if I'm down here thumping around. So we'll just let them kind of hang out, get some green grass, and maybe some will even migrate into this new area. We'll see. All right, while I'm stretching this out, I did want to take some time. I promised people I'd do a follow-up. So it's been almost six months with my Rock Rooster boots that they sent me last fall. It, uh, boots have worked out great. I wear them all the time on the farm. I tried to clean them up a little bit for this, for this mention, but uh, I've already stepped in the mud. But they have held up really well. One of the things I like about the boots is they have the plastic safety toe. So instead of a steel toe, it's a plastic toe which I'm no safety expert, but it's my understanding that you drop something so heavy that if it crushes a steel toe, it actually cuts your toes off. Whereas you drop something super heavy on a plastic safety toe, then you have pancake toes. So I guess flat Stanley toes are better than chopped off toes. Anyway, they've been nice because I have rolled some logs up on them before and, and dropped some tools and things. So stuff that would normally make you say, ouch, and jump around quite a bit and let out some choice words haven't happened. So I was so impressed with those boots that I went ahead and ordered some hiking boots because this time of year we like to uh, go up to camp, hit the trails, those type of things. So I was really happy with the comfort and wear of these. So I've tried out their new hiking boot line that they've just released. So uh, if you want to check those out, go ahead. I'll post a link below and there's a 10% discount code um, listed there as well if you use our code. So that way you can, uh, you can get some discounts there if you want. Really great boots. Like I said, I've, I've been impressed. They've lasted a lot longer than uh, my old boots. And I, yeah, they don't show any sign of wear, no cracks, no gaps. So hopefully if I can keep the pigs from eating them off my feet, then we'll be good to go for quite a while. So with our bellwater hanging here on the outside, I'll just take my plunger that's hooked up to our tank and try to do this one-handed. There we go. Lock it in place. 
and it should start running water here in a second. Okay, for my energizer, since it's going to be outside, it's best not to have those just directly exposed to the elements. So I went up to the workshop real quick and busted together a, uh, a little energizer birdhouse. <laughs> so, so we'll stick that in the ground. It's got a hook in there to hang the energizer on and that'll shield it from some of the direct weather. I'm going to put this north facing since I won't get direct sun on it and we don't have a lot of storms that normally blow out of the north. Now, any other YouTube channel would edit that out. <laughs> Clearly, the glue wasn't dry yet. So, we're going to get some screws and we're going to attach it from the backside. All right. So, got it heated up. <laughs> got it put back together. <laughs> and, um,. Electricity on this side, so we'll put a test on this side and see what we're getting with our meter here. So that's 4.5 kilovolts. That should keep all the critters out. All right, so it's quickly approaching dark, and I've got my cage loaded, gathering my team up. We're going to head down and start moving some chickens. All right, so obviously doing this after dark with the headlights of the side by side. You see my that? Face. Oh, you've got a <laughs> tripod in your face. <laughs> Here, let's go down a little bit. So we got uh, how many chickens do we have? Fifty-two. Fifty-two, which I was not estimating fifty-two. I thought for sure we had forty-two, but uh, so we've got ten more. We must be making chicken somehow. <laughs> So I'm going to have to add another roost bar because I made enough for about 40. And They're definitely fighting over it's space. It's <laughs> a little crowded right now. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll do that adjustment tomorrow, probably add a new roost. But so far they're all tucked in. I went ahead and closed them all up completely uh, because I want them to have the experience of me coming down and letting them out, introduce them to water, all that type of stuff, versus them just trying to figure it all out. Okay, here we go. Right, so it's the next morning and letting everybody out to check out their new digs. Seems uh, they did okay overnight. Tonight will be obviously the first chance where they get to pick their roost while it's still daylight and not, <laughs> not have to fumble around in the dark. So hopefully they can get that figured out a little bit better. And we'll add some additional roosts, a couple little tweaks here and there that we'll do to the, to the coop as we go along and see how they use it. Okay, fast forward seven days later, it's uh, bright and early morning here, and it's time to actually move this location. Looks like seven days is going to be uh, pretty much the run. And we'll move it here and I'll show you the details of that spot, but you can kind of see the ground, how it's 
pecked over pretty good. They've cleaned it up really well. And uh, we're just gonna move them just another circle of fence. We're gonna move them over here to this pretty stuff and let them out. I closed them up last night in anticipation of this. So they're anxiously awaiting release. <laughs> So we'll just want to see. I just kind of see how um, how well I can tear this down, move it over, and set it back up. So come with me. Okay, pretty simple move there. Obviously, was able to leave the back section of this uh, fence circle up. So just simply wrapped it around the other way. Still turning the coop kind of east-west so we get more shade in the evening since it's starting to get warmer. But uh, fresh grass here. Let's let them out and see how they like it. As you can tell the difference pretty substantial there. In fact, you can, I was showing what the camera, you can see the two green spots where the tire wells were. <laughs> and since I keep the feeder inside right now, extra feed falls down through, and you can see this collection of poop and a bit of a bare spot where they're really scratching that and getting the extra feed. So that'll be something I may have to uh, reseed on a regular basis, but we'll see. So I still haven't purchased my uh, deep cycle batteries yet to run my 12 volt charger. I'm still using my 110 and I've got enough extension cord to go down to this next length but then definitely by next week I'm going to be out. I'm trying to find a second old battery so I can have uh, two core exchanges save some money there. I know I've got some I just got to figure out where I've hidden them. <laughs> so, I found one I need to find the other one but uh, use our extension cord for now and that'll get us going. So I've really been happy with going with this one by one square hardware cloth or rabbit cage wire on the floor. It's really allowed a lot of the poop to fall through. Now granted there's still going to be some that hangs on. And then there's some that hits the cross members underneath. But if you all know having chickens, having 52 chickens poop in one central location like this for a week, if that was a solid floor, or even the smaller hardware cloth, and that would just be a big cake to mess right now. So I love the good bit of that's dropping through. I can obviously take just a scraper and reach under there and scrape that out if I need to, or uh, even come through with a water hose and wash that out from time to time. 
Look at the tank there. The tank is about, uh, it's about an eighth from being full. And we had one rain event, I believe, just the other night. And that filled that up completely. So excited with, uh, with how that's going to fill up. Looks like it's taken about five days for them to drink it down. So I, I know we, we definitely go times in the summer where we have um, way less than uh, you know, rain once every five days. So I'll probably have to fill that myself So uh, a couple times. So we'll look at adding a, a filler to that. Um, nesting boxes are working great. In fact, our egg production is already up. We were, with these 52 birds, we were getting in the mid-20s and we had an egg eater. So that was an issue, but I think the heat and the light in the greenhouse uh, just being too bright and too hot was affecting that. So now that we've got the nice little shady pocket, of course right now it's sitting in the sun, the nice little shady pocket for them to be in, our egg production is up to like 35, so uh, on average. So really like what we're getting there and we'll see how it goes. Hopefully that will even go up more as they get introduced to more grass and, and the seasons change uh, and we'll see how that shakes out. So probably if I was to make one more adjustment, it may be to the feeder situation. So I've got the feeder inside right now and it's sitting on that wire so it's uneven. Uh, some of the chickens are trying to roost on it so yet another reason to add a roost bar. But uh, I really like to have a feeder outside that could be in the weather. So we may look at switching over to something like that, something that's got an overhang. Really like the Duncan feeders but the ones I have don't have any um, weather protection to them. So you may look at something that's got an overhang or even make a little overhang that can easily be picked up and tossed in the side by side when we move from point to point. Well, I think we'll call that a, a wrap. Hope that it was a good follow up to show you the ins and outs of what we put together and we'll update it from time to time as, as we run into uh, pros and cons. And eventually when we start to move it up on the mountain, see how that goes, see how the chickens can handle going up some of these steep grades. All right, take care everybody.